So, condenser mics, are they really worth all the extra money? How big are the differences? Could you be spending more than you really need to? All these questions and more answered if you just keep watching as we dive right in to see what the truth really is. <clears throat> Hi there, and welcome to Studio Tips and Sound Advice. Last week we looked at dynamic mics to test the differences, and this week it's the turn of condensers. From the pretty cheap to the quite pricey, covering both large and small diaphragms, so you can make more informed judgments about what you want and how much you want to spend. It will be quite a journey, so strap in. Now, it is true indeed that you can spend an eye-watering amount of money on a microphone, and conversely, you can also spend very little. So what should you do? How much money should you spend, and what should you get? Indeed, are they just stealing your hard-earned cash? Well, we already looked at different types of mics last week, so this week let's get straight into testing and the results, and if you stick around to the end, well I will give you my thoughts on the results that we have found so far. So as with last week, you can see I set up the microphones very close together in my vocal booth to allow them to record the same sound source at the same time, and as the sounds I was to be using, a tambourine, my voice, an acoustic guitar, and a few other new ideas could all vary depending on the performance, I wanted to avoid these issues. Each performance this time was done around 80 to 100 centimetres from the mics, exactly in front of them. I left a greater distance this week as the mics were a lot more sensitive, and this gives space for the sound to develop nicely, as well as avoiding issues of the slight variations in position due to their much larger size than the dynamics last week. Who knows, if this proves popular as a subject, I may well revisit it, taking more time to set each mic up optimally for each sound source. Subscribe to the channel and you'll not miss any of these future adventures in sound. As always, feel free to sound off in the comments with any issues you have with my methodology and good suggestions or points that I could try to address in a future video. So, the microphones. Why did I choose to compare these mics? Well, they are what I own, and I cannot afford to just go and buy a whole new bunch of mics just to do this test. Well, not yet, anyway. So then, why did I choose to buy these microphones? Well, a little background. The first mic I bought is the Audio-Technica AT4033A. I have owned this since the late 1990s, and before I even had a proper studio and multi-track computer system. You can get it now for about £355 from the same major European music store that I used as a price guide last week. The next mic I bought was the AKG C1000S, the small diaphragm condenser representative on our tests. I got this about 20 years ago when I first built my studio and multi-track computer. Yes, I built everything myself with some assistance building the studio from my dad who was an electrical engineer. Anyway, I got these two to serve as my overheads for my first ever set of drum mics. You can get these for about £85 now, and they come in black as well. So they are cheaper and cooler looking than when I got mine. But, <laughs> let's move on. The next mic I bought was the AKG Solid Tube. This is a tube mic, and I've owned this for probably 15 years, and I think I paid about £600 for it. Although, the list price on release was more like about 1000 I believe. But you can still find them for about £450 to £500 if you search online. Then came the AKG Perception 400. I only got this as I needed a third large diaphragm mic for recording three vocals simultaneously for a project but I didn't have much money and it was all I could afford. I seem to remember I got it for under £200, although I think the original list price was more like £300. And you could probably find some second-hand ones for under £100 now. The last of our contenders is the SE Titan, which has a diaphragm coated in titanium. And well, SE needs no introduction when it comes to microphones. The original price of these was about £1,000 each, and I got two for a bit of a reduced price when they were being discontinued. If you haven't noticed, I like to grab things when they're reduced in price. Anyway, 
let us get started. We will start with the voice again this week, and the same piece as I used last time. This first take is me singing with a lower register voice. I've spent my whole life on the streets and seen what they've become. I've spent my whole life on the streets and seen what they've become. I've spent my whole life on the streets and seen what they've become. I've spent my whole life on the streets and seen what they've become. I've spent my whole life on the streets and seen what they've become. Now, I don't know about you, but there is very little difference going on here. Slight variations, a little bit more body on some, a bit more top end on others, but none of them sound awful, and if I did a blindfold test, well, I'd hazard a guess. You would be hard pressed to put them in price order. So, what about a slightly higher register voice? I've seen the future on the TV screen, hot so much in fear. But the images of drugs and violence making it so near. I've seen the future on the TV screen, hot so much in fear. But the images of drugs and violence making it so near. I've seen the future on the TV screen, hot so much in fear. But the images of drugs and violence making it so near. I've seen the future on the TV screen, hot so much in fear. But the images of drugs and violence making it so near. I've seen the future on the TV screen, hot so much in fear. But the images of drugs and violence making it so near. And again, I would argue the same findings. Right, what about the other commonly mic'd up sound source of the acoustic guitar? Now this has much more variation tonally than the voice. Again, I'm purely doing a very basic strum, as I'm more concerned with the guitar's position to the mics than the performance. So, what do you think? Can you pick out the mics that are about nine times as expensive? This test has shown a bit more variation than with the voice, but again, I think they're all more than acceptable. Okay, so let's get on to some much higher frequencies and do the tambourine test.
And yet again, I think anyone would be hard pushed to pick out a favourite. There is probably less variation here than with the guitar even. Okay, so this week I've decided to expand the testing to include a couple of cymbals. So have a listen to this. This is a darker crash cymbal from my collection. And this is a much brighter crash symbol from my collection. Now these, I would say, did allow some of the variations between the mics to stand out a bit more, but again, even the sub £100 C1000 sounds pretty damn acceptable. But please, comment below with your thoughts, and if you want WAV copies of the files, well, just ask. So, we have done the subjective testing of voice, guitar, tambourine and cymbals to try and let our ears be the judge and jury. But let us move on to the test tone section and use our eyes. Now, as with the last video, here I set up each mic individually in the vocal booth with a small speaker playing test tones, about 45 centimeters from the microphone grill. I did them individually so the position would be identical, the cables would be the same, and the desk channel also the same, and altered no settings after getting a good, strong signal that didn't peak on the loudest responses. Again, I used a series of test tones, 100, 400, 800 hertz, 1, 2.5, 5, 10, 12.5, and 15 kilohertz. Now, as you can see from what I recorded in my door, there is again, quite a variation. You can see the C1000 is by far the quietest of the mics. And here we can see the Perception 400 is actually the loudest of them all, especially when you get above one kilohertz. This is the AT4033A. This is the solid tube, which is the second quietest. And finally, the Titan by SE, which is probably the most evenly balanced along with the solid tube. So then, just like last week, I took all these values and plotted them on a graph for you to make comparisons of it easier to draw. And here we are. So have a look at this and see if it makes your job of comparing any easier. Now, as with last week, I must stress that these are all pure sounds. All I did was boost the signals to eliminate differences in volumes with the instruments and to make this playback a level field. But there is no EQ and no compression applied at all. Also, you may have noticed dips at around 100 hertz and above 12.5 kilohertz. These are not the microphones, but the small speaker I used to play the tones back from. Now, I can hear the screams from the back at such heinous crimes. How can you carry out testing with such suboptimal equipment? Easily. It's a level playing field for each mic, and so comparisons can still be drawn. Maybe in a future episode, when I have several thousand subscribers and my videos are getting tens of thousands of views, I will set up a fuller range, more balanced speaker system in my vocal booth. But for now, well, that's constrained to my control room. C'est la vie, as they say. But all that said, 
As promised at the start, I think it's time for me to summarise what we have learnt and found out today. Even to my faded, old, jaded ears, the Titan does stand out from the crowd. But then I should hope so, as I did pay for them with my own hard-earned cash. They have slightly more body and clarity without being harsh, and they seem to capture textures that the others have missed, especially on the cymbals. The solid tube was probably the warmest of all the mics, but it does have a tube and it was very balanced overall. The AT4033A was truly excellent, and it is obvious why it has stayed around for decades. Excellent value for money. The Perception 400 may be a little bit abrasive in the upper frequencies when compared to such worthy contenders. And then lastly, the C1000, well, it is a small diaphragm mic, and it is the cheapest, and that did stand out when sat next to all the rest. Now that been said, you have heard the differences and they are small and subjective. Any one of these mics will give you good results and to that end I would also have to argue that once you have done some post-production on any of them and put them in a mix with other instruments and performances, the differences are going to be even less apparent. Indeed, you can pull out and highlight textures, and that is exactly where your skill and craft comes in. The C1000 capturing an amazing performance in the hands of a skilled engineer will be superior to the Titan capturing a naff performance in the hands of someone who doesn't know what to do and doesn't care how to learn to be better. Only you can decide if the money you've worked so hard for is worthy of investing in such an upgrade. But as the old adage goes, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. As always, if you have any questions or you think I've missed something, use the comment section below. And before you leave, if you found this useful, hit the like button so YouTube knows this and shares it with others. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you get notified when the next video is ready for your enjoyment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.